In this video, I'd like to compare how you can apply a texture map to a NURB surface and a polygonal surface. As you can see here, the end result is almost identical, but the way we get there is slightly different. Each kind of geometry has its own unique characteristics that control how the texture map is applied to the surface. The way a texture map is applied to a surface is controlled by what is known as UVs. UVs are a way of describing a point on a surface, which is a little bit different than trying to describe a point in three-dimensional space. So you can think of UVs as a kind of a vertical and horizontal location on any given surface. The way I'd like to visualize UVs is imagine that you're looking at a road, and the road represents the surface of your geometry. And there may be curves in that surface, there may be hills and bumps, it's not necessarily a perfectly flat surface. So imagine you want to describe where you're standing on this road. You might say, I'm two miles down the road, and I'm standing on the right side of the road. So the distance is described by the V parameter. That would be similar to miles. And the same way miles work, it doesn't matter if it's a hill or a curve. The miles measure the distance along the surface of the road. And if you say, I'm standing on the right side of the road, that's describing your U position. So V you can think of as maybe vertical or uh, the vanishing point along the distance of the road, and U you can think of as the position along the width of the surface. So the way that UVs are applied to NURBS or polygon surfaces is slightly different, and I'll show that to you now. I'll start by applying a texture map to the NURB surface, so I'll select that, and then I'm going to open up my Hypershade, and in the Hypershade I'm going to create a new Lambert shader, and I'm going to rename that to be NURBS. And then I will apply that to the surface. Now that I've applied that shader to the surface, I can start to edit that shader. So I'm going to double click it to open it up in the attribute editor. And then I will apply a texture map to the color channel. So I'll click on color, the input node for color, and then I'll go to file click on the input node next to image name and I'm going to select this UV utility map. This particular image is designed to show you the orientation of your UV layout as it applies to your surface. So each grid on this texture map has a unique color and number so you can easily locate where that texture lands on your surface. So it's a good way to tell if there's any stretching or uh, distortion happening on your texture map. And I'll show you here quickly the website that I downloaded this texture from. He's got a couple of other texture utilities that you can also apply to your projects. So now that I've selected this texture, I'm going to click on Open. Now I'd like to see the pipeline of how this shader is arranged. So I'm going to come over here to the Graph node. And with the NURBS shader selected, I'm going to click on the uh, Graph node to graph that shader in the work area here. So I can see the pipeline of how this shader is built. And now I'll just pull this hypershade out of the way so I can show you how that texture has been applied to the surface. If I come in here uh, to my perspective view and I click on the 5 key, that gives us a shaded mode. But if I press on the 6 key, it gives me a textured mode so I can see how the texture map is applied to that surface. If I want to make any adjustments to this surface, I have to go into my uh, Hypershade and I'm going to select this Place 2D Texture node. When I select it here, it comes up in my Attribute Editor. And what you can see here is that you've got the opportunity to adjust your UV layout. So here it's saying Repeat UVs. The first coordinates are the U direction and the second coordinates are the V direction. So if I want to start making adjustments to the UV layout on this NURB surface, I'm going to come in here and I will uh, press the Command key and middle mouse click in this box. And as I drag, you can see how uh, I'm changing the amount of repeating that's happening inside of the texture applied to that NURB's surface. So that's the number of repeats. If I set that back to 1, the same thing here with coverage. If I want to change the coverage here, I'm going to Command click inside of that window. And you can see how now it's only covering half of the surface. And that works not only for the uh, U direction, but also the V direction.
One of the things to keep in mind when working with the UVs is that regardless of the size or scale or topology of the surface, when you're talking about UVs, the beginning of the surface always starts at zero and the end of the surface is always at one. So any value between zero and one describes the beginning and end of that surface in both the U direction and the V direction. And that's something that applies not only to NURB surfaces, but also to polygonal surfaces. One of the unique things about NURB surfaces and UV maps is that there is a one-to-one -one relationship between the position of the UV on the surface and the NURBS surface itself. And what I mean there is that this place 2D texture node is the only opportunity you have to make adjustments to the uh, orientation and positioning of the UV map. And that's because the UVs are essentially baked into the surface of this NURBS geometry. I'll show you what I'm talking about. If I select that surface and I right click on it and choose control vertex, Suppose I select this column of vertices and I start to move them. Even though I'm changing the topology of the NURBS surface itself, I'm also changing the way the UVs are spread out across that surface. And that's because there's a one-to-one -one relationship between each of the points of these control vertices compared to the UV location. So those two parameters are locked together so that when I change the surface of the geometry, I'm also changing the way the texture is displayed. So this texture stretching is one of the pitfalls of working with NURBS textures. And I'll just do a quick render here to show you what that looks like. And what you see is that the actual rendered surface is being stretched and that's not always the effect that you would like. There is a way to get rid of that stretching effect in Maya, and I'll show you that now. If I come back in here and I select the surface again in object mode, and I open the attribute editor for that uh, NURBS plane, I can come down here to texture map, and there's a button here that says fix texture warp. If I turn that on, what it's doing is converting that surface from a uniform parameterization into a chord length based parameterization. And what it tries to do is make that texture evenly spaced across the entire surface. And so now if I render this image with the fixed texture warp on, I'll show you what that looks like. So here is the same, even with the stretched UVs, uh, it's attempted to uh, space that out evenly. So that's an easy way to correct that stretching effect that you might get from your NURBS texture maps. And so now I'll switch over to polygons so we can compare the difference of how polygons are texture mapped compared to the NURB surfaces. So I'll start out the same way. I'll open up my hypershade window and I'm going to come in here and create a new Lambert shader and I'll rename that to be poly material. And now I'll come and assign that to the polygonal geometry. And now if I double click that shader, I can open up the attribute editor. And next to the color node, I'll click on the input node. And I'm going to select a file texture. And I'd like to graph that material so I can now see that input node. And when I double click on the file texture, I can come over here to the image name input node. And I'm again going to select the UV utility map and apply that. So far, everything that we've done to create the polygon texture is identical to what we did to create the NURBS texture. If I select both of these and graph them, you can see that there's no difference between the polygon setup and the NURBS setup. They are identical in terms of how we've created these texture maps. However, when I go to the perspective view and I look at the surface, you can see that the NURBS surface is receiving the texture map but the polygonal surface, even though that texture is assigned to that material, I'm not seeing any of the texture map on the surface. And the reason for that is that polygons do not have a UV texture map baked into it the same way that NURB surfaces do. If you want to apply a texture map to a polygonal surface, you have to create what is called a UV set or a UV map that is unique to that polygonal surface. So we can do that here in Maya. I'm going to switch over to my polygon menu set. 
And from the pull down menu, I'm going to click on create UVs. You can see I've got a couple of choices here. There's planar, cylindrical and spherical and automatic mapping. And the concept here is that this is like a 2D projection map that is unique to your polygonal surface. So because this is a planar surface, I'm going to choose planar mapping, but I have to uh, select my option box and bring up the dialog box for that. So in our option box here, what we want to do is tell Maya the direction that we want to make the projection of the texture map come from. And so here in our world space, you can see that the Z direction is the blue vector that we would like to project the texture directly into the surface of this. So I'm going to choose the Z axis to project this texture map from. And when I click on apply, you can see that it is assigned that texture now to that polygonal surface. So I can close this dialog box now. And if I want to start to control how that texture map is laid out across the polygonal surface, there's a specific tool designed to control the UVs as they're assigned to polygons. And if you come up here to your window pull down menu and choose UV texture editor, this interface controls how the UVs are laid out on that surface. So in the UV texture editor, I can click and drag on these parameters and change the orientation and offset of that texture map and control how that texture map is placed on that surface. So the nice thing about working with textures and polygons in this way is that the geometry of the polygonal surface is completely independent of the UV texture map. And I'll show you what I'm talking about here. I'm just going to draw a pick box around some of these vertices. And if I come in here and I start to move them, you see I'm getting that stretching effect that we saw earlier on the NURB surface. But I'm going to show you an option that allows us to control that effect and separate the vertices from the UV. So I'll come up in here to my uh, move tool and I'll open up the option box. And if I scroll down, you can see here there's an option to preserve UVs. If I turn that on in the move tool and now when I move the uh, vertices of the geometry, Maya does its best to keep those CVs in place. So you can see here in the UV texture editor, I've repositioned those vertices on the geometry, but the UV map is staying the same. And so another aspect of that functionality is that I can also select the UVs and move those independently of the polygonal geometry. And I'll show you that here. If I right click on my surface and I select UVs, the UVs are displayed on the geometry. And if I draw a pick box around those UVs, uh, I'm going to hit the move tool. You see, I cannot move the UVs in the perspective view. But if I look over here in my UV texture editor, I can move them here. And as I pull and push those UVs, then you can see I'm repositioning them on top of the UV map, but I'm not actually changing the geometry in the uh, polygonal object. So that's another level of control where you get the benefit of having the UVs separated from the polygonal geometry. So that's some of the basic differences you'll see when it comes to texture mapping your geometry and the differences between texturing NURB surfaces and polygonal surfaces.